Hello class, I'm Professor Dwight Hughes for Clark College Network Technology Department. For the IP Subnetting and Tech 103 class, this is Module 3, Lecture 3, IPv4 Subnetting. All right, I'm going to try to break subnetting down into some pretty simple tools that we can use, but we need to start with user requirements, some things we need to know before we get started. So the reason we would subnet is to break up a network. A network is like a big bag of M&Ms that you might uh, purchase, say, at Costco. And it's just too big and too many. It's in one big thing. And you decide it would be smarter and more strategic to break that up into some smaller piles or baggies or however you do that. So we have to figure out what our user requirements are. How many groups of devices do we want to split our network into? and how many devices will be in each of these groups. We're really interested in the largest of those groups. So the groups may be different sizes, like you might need uh, three cash registers out front, you might need a management system in the back, and you might need uh, some production uh, computers back in, in some other area of the company. You have to figure out then how many groups, so that would be you know the front cash registers and the management systems, and then how many devices in each group so that we can identify the largest of the groups. We'll look at why in a moment. So one fun way to kind of think about this is M&Ms. Uh, I like M&Ms and uh, they come in many different colors. This is a simple network, 172.16.0.0. This one has a slash 28. That's just so we can start with 16. You can see them listed out there. On the right, you'll see the 172.16.0.0.28 network. Actually, the host bits, there's only four of them, right? If there's 28 network bits, so my CIDR notation tells me where the host bits begin, I can see by that number there that I have four host uh, bits, and I've written them out for you in binary so you can see how the four bits start at all zeros and roll all the way down. So really, a network is just a list of numbers, and those are the host numbers there. I've gone ahead and converted them to decimal for you. And although M&Ms are a lot of fun, um, let's, let's see if we can group them up just for fun by color maybe, right? Use these colors. So if I wanted to make four groups, I could put all the orange M&Ms in a pile and the green ones in a pile and the red ones and the blue ones like you see in the illustration I made here. And so that's a fun way to kind of think about it. But we, of course, we don't have colors. We just have numbers. And so on our list over on the right, um, I've made similar groupings. We've just carved the list up into four groups, 0 through 3, 4 through 7, 8 through 11, and 12 through 15. Hopefully you can see the analogy there between putting colored M&Ms. If we get rid of the colors and put numbers on the M&Ms, that gets a lot closer than in those two analogies. So here we've numbered our M&Ms, so the graphical representation of the four piles of M&Ms match our list. Now, we have special IP addresses in our list. The very first IP is going to be the network ID and the very last is going to be the broadcast. And you're going to have that in every single group. Okay, So those have a special use. You notice I've crossed out the M&Ms so they'll match our diagram on the right. So those aren't gone, they just can't be used on devices. So the first, the network ID, identifies that subnetwork for us, that group, and the last one is a broadcast used to send a shout out to all devices in that subnetwork, in that group. But you can see there's a cost to subnetting where before I had 16 M&Ms and I could use 14 of them because I wouldn't be able to use the first and last for the same reasons. The first one identified my network and the last one identified the broadcast for my network. But now that I've decided to break my network into four groups instead of one big group, I've lost quite a few of my assignable IPs. So I'm left with about 50% of my IPs that are available to actually put on devices which would be fine as long as my user requirements were four groups with two usable devices in each, this would do it, this would rock, right? Let's start talking about the tools we need to make that happen. So we 
always start with user requirements so you can't get going until you know how many groups and how many devices per group but once you do you can use these three simple tools to subnet I'll teach each to you one is called finger math the next is called binary zoom and we'll end with anding okay finger math pretty simple you're going to use your fingers and we're going to solve two mathematical equations this is a measuring tool to figure out how many bits I need to implement the user requirements. So 2 to the s is the number of subnets, right? s being the number of borrowed host bits, so the number of bits I need to create that many subnets. And then number of hosts, we have total hosts and then usable hosts. Remember, we can't use the first or the last host because the first host is a network ID and the last host is a broadcast address. So that's why the formula has a minus two. I often just do the two to the H first and then minus the two. If we put some real numbers to this, let's say we want to have 500 subnets. I can go ahead and calculate that. I can say, okay, how many bits do I need to represent 500 subnets? And you just count on your fingers. One finger is two though, because a finger is a bit. So if I have one bit, I could have a zero subnet and a one subnet. So I can have out of one bit position, I can have two values, one and zero. So we start counting at two actually with our fingers. So always with finger math, count two, four, eight, 16. Go ahead and do it with me. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. It would take nine bits to um, accommodate 500 subnets. Now, I know I came up with 512. That's not exactly 500, but that's how user requirements work. We go the closest fit over. You couldn't go under because they need 500 groups, so you couldn't give them less than that. You go with the, the closest size you can that's over. So let's say we want to make sure that we have um, 100 usable hosts in each of our subnets. That means the remaining bits, right, if you look at the top number, that slash 16, means there are 16 network bits. Since I know it's a 32-bit number, there's also 16 host bits available. And if I borrow nine of them, because I had nine fingers for subnets, so if I borrowed nine, I would have seven bits left. Is that going to be enough to accommodate 100 hosts? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Yes, seven bits will be 128, which is a best fit for, even though we have to subtract two, so it's really 126 is our usable host, which is a good fit for the user requirements. Let's move on to the next tool binary zoom. So once we know the user requirements and once we've done finger math to figure out how many bits we need to borrow and how many bits we need to leave for hosts, we're ready to use binary zoom. This is a tool that lets us look at an IP address in binary. And that allows us to see the three parts of an IP address. I know you thought there were four because there's four octets. We only see that in decimal. In the binary world, there are three parts, the network, the subnetwork, and the host. Let's take 172.16.00 slash 16. That's going to be the number we go ahead and zoom. If I zoom that down into binary, which is what the binary zoom tool does, we just write the number in binary. We can then draw where the slash 16 goes. Notice it would go 16 bits in counting from the left. So the bits to the left would be the network bits and the bits to the right would be my host bits. Let's add in some user requirements. Those same ones we used earlier in this lecture. What if we want 500 subnets and 100 hosts? Well, we already did this math. We figured out that two to the nine was 512 and 2 to the 7 was 126. Actually, if you want to be accurate, right, 2 to the 7 is 128 and then there's a minus 2. Right now, we only have two parts to our IP address and you can see them here, the network bits and the host bits. And we can add the 9 and 7 together and see that it would equal 16. So we know that's going to fit in the host bit space that we have available. Let's go ahead and draw it in. 
So if I borrow my 9 bits, that would take me over to the 25th bit. Notice that it has now changed. At this point, I have subnetted. I have now changed my mask from slash 16 to slash 25. I have moved it over. And so I have gone from 16 host bits down to 7 host bits. 9 have been borrowed. The next thing we need to do is anding. Anding is the tool we need to find out our range of usable host addresses, our network ID, and our broadcast address. This tool is used after we've done the user requirements finger math and the binary zoom. So here's the binary zoom work from before. And in this case, we are going to be identifying the network ID. And on the right, you can see a network ID is where the host bits are all zeros, a broadcast where the host bits are all ones, and everything left in between the network ID and broadcast is the usable host range. So all we do is write all zeros for the host and all ones for the host. Notice the bits to the left of the slash 25 have remained unchanged. Those are our network bits now and we don't touch them. So we're only manipulating the bits to the right of our line. And I can then write those out in decimal and that's my network ID and my broadcast. And from that, I can go ahead and calculate my host range because it would begin one higher than the network ID and end one lower than the broadcast, as you see here. So in summary, we've gone over using finger math, the binary zoom, and anding as our three IP subnetting tools in our toolbox. Next lecture, we'll add two more tools, Scratchpad and Dialin, to do more advanced subnetting. See you next time.